Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 14 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll talk about self-join, which is nothing but joining a table with itself. We'll also talk about self-join classification. Most of the people think self-join is a different type of join altogether, which is not true. Self-join can be classified as inner, outer, or cross-join, depending on how you write that self-join. Before continuing with this session, I strongly recommend watching parts 12 and 13 of this video series. Now, in parts 12 and 13, we have already seen how to join two different tables. Specifically, we have been working with TBL employees and TBL departments tables. But have you ever thought of a need to join a table with itself? If you look at the table here that we have, it has got three columns, employee ID, name, and manager ID. Now, let's say I want you to write a query which gives me an output like this. I want the employee name as well as his manager's name. Okay. Now, if you look at the table on the left-hand side, if you look at Mike, Mike's manager ID is 3. And you take this 3 and look up in the employee ID column. Okay. 3 is Todd, so Mike's manager is Todd. And along the same lines, if you look at Rob, his manager ID is 1. And you take this one and look up in the employee ID column. One is Mike. Okay, so Rob's manager is Mike. And we get that output here. So if you look at the situation here, we are using this manager ID column and looking up in the employee ID column within the same table, which means we are, you know, referencing the same table. Okay, so here, if we want this kind of an output like employee name and manager's name, there is a need to join this employee table with itself. In parts 12 and 13, we have joined TBL employees and TBL department tables. But then in TBL employee table, I had department ID column, which I have used to look up the ID column in TBL departments table, which is another table. But here, I'm using this manager ID column to look up employee ID column in the same table. So there is a need to reference the same table, to join with the ta same table. And that's nothing but a self-join. Now, you might be wondering, how can we join the same table with itself? Okay, so if you look at this here, this query right here, you know, we have done exactly the same thing. Okay, select. First of all, what are the, we'll talk about these columns just in a bit, okay? So if you look at the output, we want the employee name and the manager name. So select employee name, manager name. We'll come to those bits in, a, in uh, you know, the column list in the select clause in a bit. If you look at the from clause, we are saying TBL employee, and we are giving it an, a table alias E, and we are saying, okay, join this table, left to join, we are doing a left join with TBL employee again. So if you look at this, you know, forget about the type of join here. It can be inner join, left join, whatever. Okay. So select whatever columns you want from TBL employee, give it an alias E, join with the same table TBL employee and give it another alias M, E for employee, M for manager. So you can assume now we have two instances of this table, you know, two copies of this table rather employee table and then another table like manager table okay but both of the structures will be identical you know you're basically referencing the same table and then what you're doing is in employee table take the manager id column okay in the employee table take the manager id column and look up the employee id in the manager table which is nothing but another copy of the same table Okay, and then from the employees table, which is nothing but E, I want the name, which is nothing but the employee name. So I'm giving it an, an alias as employee. And from the managers table, I'm getting the name, which is nothing but the manager name. Okay, so, so that's how we get this output. If you look at the join here, we are joining with the same table. So this is nothing but a self join. So let's write this in SQL Server Management Studio. So we'll come to the column list in a bit, okay? Select from, from which table? From TBL employee. 
Let's give it an alias E. Left join with the same table TBL employee, but then I'm going to call this M for manager. So this is an employee table. This is the manager table. And how do we want to join that? Okay. In the employees table, I want to take the manager ID column and look that up in the manager table in the employee ID column. So look up employee ID column in manager table using the manager ID column in employee table. You are treating the same table as two different tables now, which means you are actually joining the same table with itself. So what columns do you want now? From the employee table, if I pick up the name, it will be an employee name. So give it a meaningful name. So as employee, give it an alias. And similarly, from manager table, I want the name, but this is going to be the manager name. So manager. So that's it. So when we execute this query, we get the output as we expect. Okay. Now, look at this. We are using a left join here. And if you remember from part 12 and 13 of this video series, left join will give you all the matching rows between these two tables plus non-matching rows from the left table. Okay. But if it's an inner join, it will only give the matching rows between the two tables, which means, look at this, when we were using left join, we were getting thoughts record as well. But the moment I change it to inner join, okay, see, if you look at the output right now, we've got five rows, including the thoughts record. Now, when I execute this one, look at what's going to happen. I only get four rows. What happens to Todd record? It's not retrieved anymore. Why? Because if you look at Todd's record, the manager ID does not match with any of the employee IDs. There is no matching record. And if you remember, inner join will only give you the matching records between the two tables. Now you might be wondering where are two tables here, but remember in the join, we are joining this table with itself. So we are treating a single table like two tables. We are joining the same table with itself. Okay, so when you are using this column to look up in the employee ID column of the same table, if there are no matching rows and you're doing an inner, uh, I mean, um, the matching rows are not returned if you do an inner self join. So you can call this as an inner self join. Okay, why is it called a self join? Because you're joining the same table with itself and you're doing an inner join, so inner self join. And along the same lines, you can call this query, you know, you're joining if you look at the first um, picture here, we are joining TBL employee with manager, but we are doing a left join. So you can call this as left outer self join. Okay, so along the same lines, you can do a right outer self join and a full outer self join. So a self join is not a different type of join altogether. It can be classified under any type of join, inner, outer, any of the outer joins, left, right, or full, and cross join as well. We have seen how to write a self, you know, left outer self join, inner self join, but we haven't seen how to write a cross self join. It's pretty much identical. If you remember from part 12 of this video series, a cross join cannot have an on clause. So a cross sol self join can also can, I mean, it shall it also shouldn't have the on clause. So if you want to convert this into a cross join, the first thing you have to do, get rid of the on clause, and then convert this inner join into cross join. That's about it. Since we are joining the same table with itself, we call it, you know, a self join. But since we are using cross join, it's called as cross self join. Okay. Now remember, in the employee table, we have got five rows. And if you remember from the definition of the cross join, when you do a cross join between two tables, you get the Cartesian product, which is nothing but the number of rows in the first table multiplied by the number of rows in the second table. Okay. Now here it's the same table. So in the, the same table, you know, we're joining employees table with itself In employee table, we have got five rows and in the manager table, obviously we have another five rows. So when we re execute this query, we get five multiplied by five, which is 25 rows. So when I press a five, look at that in the output, you should see there are 25 rows. So keep in mind, you know, it's very simple to understand joining a table with itself is nothing but a self join and self join is not a different type of join altogether. 
self join can be classified under any type of joins like inner outer cross join depending on how you write your self join query now if you look at the output here when we do a left um, when we do a left join on employee.manager ID is equal to manager dot employee ID. Look at this. When we execute this query, we get Todd's record. You know, Todd doesn't have a manager, so the manager name is null. Now, instead of showing null, you know, I want uh, to display, since Todd doesn't have a manager, maybe I want to display a text here saying no manager, or I want to say super boss or super manager, whatever. Instead of null, I want to show my own string here. How do I do that? There are several ways you can do it, okay, which we'll be talking about in our next session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.